This week, we've got a bunch of international news, a bunch of industry news, and more common sense science. Ain't nothing to it, but to get into it. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape Global 20 Vape Science Advocacy News for the week ending 9 September 2022. It was just a few days ago on the live stream that we spoke about Liz Truss replacing Boris Johnson as Prime Minister. And for those of you not familiar with the UK government, this required all parties appear before the Queen of England, who at the time was at Balmore Castle in Aberdeenshire, Scotland, a 500-mile trek to install the new prime minister. Yet 24 hours after the Queen appointed Liz Truss, even vaping with Vicks, Victor Mullen stated, hopefully her health does improve and she makes recovery, but there's a general feeling that she may be slowly fading away. And just a few hours later, we have witnessed the end of the second Elizabethan age. Rest in peace, Elizabeth Alexandra Mary, Queen Elizabeth II, Queen from 6 February 1952 to September 8, 2022. A 70-year-old reign ends with her passing and I would like to extend my condolences to all of you out there mourning the loss of this beloved queen. The world has lost the longest serving monarch in history. At 96, she was surpassed by her 99 year old husband of 75 years, the Duke of Edinburgh, who incidentally was the longest serving consort in British history. May they both rest in peace. Moving on to some industry news. Only 21 days left. Inventory of the progress and implementation of various aspects of e-cigarette supervision during the transition period. From October 1, 2022, the domestic electronic cigarette market will fully enter a new era of legalization and standardized development. You see, folks, China Tobacco has taken over the entire tobacco marketplace, including electronic cigarette makers. And unlike the FDA who bungled public health with their PMTA process, China's State Tobacco Monopoly Administration has added 116 new companies to a total of 306 enterprises holding an e-cigarette production license. This adds Cloud9 and 115 other companies to a list of previously authorized companies. Ones like Vupu, Smock, Relics, Use, and S'more. Meanwhile, the FDA continues to misinform the public, cracking down on non-tobacco nicotine. In total, the FDA has accepted over 350 applications for non-tobacco -nic non nicotine products, with the vast majority being for e-cigarette or e-liquid products. Everyone else gets a warning letter to stop selling. Nearly 1 million applications from more than 200 separate companies with some refuse to accept PMTAs several thousand pages long. Yet the FDA has once again used some fatal flaw strategy to mass deny more than 800,000 non-tobacco nicotine PMTA applications. I honestly wish this issue could be as simple as the FDA once again mass denying PMTAs. But it seems the FDA is lying to the public to avoid political backlash. You see, folks, according to American Vapor Manufacturers Association President 
Amanda Wheeler, her organization's member companies alone have received acceptance letters for 4,700 PMTA submissions. This is both fantastic news and willful malfeasance by the government agency tasked with the protection of public health. You see, on one hand, we have 4,700 products that the FDA has accepted applications and have the potential approval at some point in the future, meaning that ex-smoking adult may one day be able to legally purchase a vaping product that has been verified for safety by the FDA. Yet on the other hand, the FDA is blatantly lying to the public about what the heck is it's going on and what it's doing, further exaggerating the false impression that vaping may be more harmful than smoking. You know, maybe it's time we change the warning labels on cigarettes to reflect the truth. Warning, government policies will seriously affect your mental, social, and economic well-being if you choose to smoke, and especially if you choose to quit smoking. Vaping is not smoking. Vaping repairs your lungs from the damage caused by smoking. Electronic cigarettes are not cigarettes. No tobacco, no burning, no smoke, and especially no lethal tar. Except, you see here, the pharmaceutical industry doesn't like when people get healthy. If youth pick up vaping instead of smoking, they won't get smoking-related diseases. Annual pharmaceutical sales in the good old U.S. of A is $561 billion. Is this why nonprofits, health agencies, and governments that receive money from Big Pharma are against vaping? It certainly isn't because of the nicotine. Nicotine is present in all nightshade families. Tomatoes, potatoes, eggplant, okra, peppers, goji berries, tomatillos, sorrel, gooseberries, cherries, melons, tobacco, paprika, cayenne pepper, and capsicum. All contain nicotine and are consumed by every person on the entire planet. Why is it that only the UK can find signs showing the true place for vaping? Vaping and e-cigarettes have now moved to the healthcare aisle. Time to switch from smoking to vaping. It's at least 95% less harmful than smoking. No tar and no carbon monoxide. And last, but certainly not least, posted hospital signs and policies prohibiting smoking, but allowing vaping to reduce harm and improve public health by adopting harm reduction. Harm reduction is so fundamentally simple. Harm minimization, and the facts are obvious. Cigarettes are the deadliest product on the planet, and 1.1 billion smokers need to learn the facts about the safer alternative option on the other end of the scale that we call vaping. Since Hon Lick invented vaping in 2003, smoking rates have plummeted in the UK. And unfortunately, smoking rates are growing in areas where this technology is being banned or simply treated like smoking. I'm sorry, folks. I'm sure that all of you that are watching this right now already know all this stuff. So how about I fill you in on something that I bet you don't know? This past Monday, September 5th, a 6.8 magnitude earthquake struck the southwestern Chinese province of Sichuan. The death toll of this earthquake is currently at 86, with over 400 people injured and another 30 people remaining missing. Shockingly, this area has already been suffering from a drought 
and a heat wave affecting both water and power supplies. And if that wasn't bad enough, this rural province has also been under a strict COVID-19 lockdown. So Monday at noon, an earthquake devastates this area under lockdown. The Chinese government sends an emergency cruise and reserves 50 million won, 50 million yen for relief efforts. Care to guess what the Chinese vaping industry did? Small donated 1 million yen to help looting earthquake relief. One wind donated 100,000 yen to the Ludwig disaster area. Smock donated 100,000 RMB to Ludwig disaster area. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we have definitive proof the vaping industry is not a real tobacco industry, let alone big tobacco. We vapors, we look out for each other and do whatever we can to support each other, especially in times of need. As ex-smokers, we know exactly what it feels like to be let down by the system. And we know exactly what it's like to be treated as second-class citizens. But we also know, more importantly, the joy of helping others. Meanwhile, Big Pharma and Big Tobacco are only interested in one thing. Making money, regardless of cost or consequence. R.J. Reynolds ordered to pay Altria $95.2 million for e-cigarette patent infringement. The jury in the U.S. Middle District of North Carolina awarded Altria $95,233,292 in past damages through June 30th, and post-trial proceedings will address ongoing damages through the expiration of Altria's patents in 2035. At trial, Altria urged the jury to find a royalty rate of 5.25%, which the jury accepted in returning its award of past damages. Altria accused Reynolds Vapor of violating three patents related to storing and heating liquid nicotine in vaping devices. Patents are at the core of innovation, and we take very seriously protecting our intellectual property said Murray Garnick, the Executive Vice President and General Counsel at Altria. We are pleased that the jury recognized the importance of Altria's innovation and the value of its patent rights. An R.J. Reynolds spokesperson said, the company was disappointed by the verdict and would vigorously defend the issues remaining for the court and will appeal if necessary. The verdict comes four months after Altria subsidiary, Philip Morris International Incorporated, won a $10 million judgment in June in Virginia on claims that R.J. Reynolds' views solo and Alto devices infringed on two of its vaping patents. R.J. Reynolds sued Philip Morris and Altria in the same case, claiming Philip Morris's heat tobacco device infringed on e-cigarette patents. R.J. Reynolds also won an order blocking imports of the device, which Altria distributes in the United States. And this was filed at the U.S. International Trade Commission. ICOS, heat not burn, could literally be saving hundreds, if not millions, of American lives. But instead, it's just stuck in another patent lawsuit, preventing harm reduction products from being sold in the United States. Meanwhile, in China, one company sees the airflow improvements or coil changes on your products and then goes and incorporates those changes into their products to improve customer satisfaction and save people's lives. Moving on. Vaping promotes smoking cessation. More data from the UK. Published on the American Council on Science and Health website, Cameron English says, a recent survey conducted at schools in England has yielded additional evidence that vaping is an effective 
smoking cessation tool. The UK's National Health Service just published the result of its survey smoking, drinking, and drug use among young people in England. The media amplified its findings. The teen vaping increased slightly from 6 to 9% between 2018 and 2021. The headlines and endless commentary were everything that you would expect from public health officials and journalists. But the key takeaway from this recent study is the vaping promotes smoking cessation and non-smokers don't vape. That is fantastic news. Well, you know what? Since we covered that one so quickly, how about I hit you with another obvious fact backed up by vape science? Teens are more likely to try e-cigarettes if their parents smoke. According to research presented at the European Respiratory Society International Congress in Barcelona, teenagers with smoking parents are 55% more likely to try electronic cigarettes. This should be a loud ringing bell in the ears of tobacco control. The solution isn't to ban vaping or constantly fill everyone's news feed with scaremongering stories. The solution is to provide harm reduction and to get smokers to quit lighting tobacco on fire. We already know the main reason teenagers give e-cigarettes a try. It's curiosity. Scare stories do not work to stop youth use. But unfortunately, it has significantly stopped adults from using the most successful product on the planet to stop smoking. Vapes shouldn't be banned to be a tobacco-free country. Speakers of Save Vaping, Save Bangladesh webinar present. Organized by the Bangladesh-based Voices of Vapors, the webinar addressed the recent proposal to ban vape and other alternative and heat not burn tobacco products in the new amendment to the country's tobacco control legislation. The event was hosted by local and international speakers working in the field of harm reduction and people involved in the vape product trade. Folks, if you're interested, there's a link in the description below to the one hour long webinar. And while you're down there, why don't you hit the like button and leave a comment with your thoughts? Because Bangladesh isn't the only country working to ban vaping right now. New vaping laws planned for South Africa. Vaping laws in South Africa are about to change. These laws are to be implemented in order to boost regulations on devices and vaping related products for both consumers and businesses. So where exactly are these vaping laws going to take us? And what does this mean for vape users, non-vape users and distributors alike? Here's all the information we currently have on the proposed installment of new vaping laws. Once again, folks, I'm not gonna take a deep dive into this. There's a link in the description below if you want a deep dive into South Africa's regulation of vaping. But here's the Cliff Notes version. South Africa has roughly 350,000 vapors and it's gonna take 300 days for the National Technical Committee to develop South African national standards for vaping. Do you think that they're actually going to implement reasonable regulations? Or do you think that they're going to apply massive taxes and ultimately stimulate more illicit trading? Leave your comments below and let me know what you think. Alrighty then, it's time for a couple quick bits before we get to a bunch of upcoming vape expos. More than $1 million worth of illegal vapes seized in Melbourne's Southeast. Officers patrolling Dingley came across massive supply of electronic cigarettes when they noticed two men acting suspiciously by a truck parked in a car park on Boundary Road, 5.30 p.m. on September 2nd according to police. The men allegedly gave differing stories 
about what they were doing to police before police were given consent to search the truck. Officers found 907,000 illegal cigarettes inside, which are worth an estimated $1,026,000. The two men, a 40-year-old from Mitcham and a 32-year-old man from Hertzville in New South Wales, were both arrested. They were later charged with negligently dealing with the proceeds of crime and possessing tobacco products with the intent of defrauding revenue of the Commonwealth. Both men have been bailed to appear before the Morbin Magistrates Court in November. You know what? If you're a passionate advocate for vaping, I urge you not to watch the Nine News coverage of this incident. The video does not talk about illicit trade or why there's such a large black market in Australia. All they talk about is how kids are being sold these mysterious nicotine addiction sticks in convenience stores and how they're readily available for sale on Facebook Marketplace and how vaping is going to kill you with unknown toxicants. One kid ha even had a seizure because he vaped something. So parents need to form an angry mob and take on the fight against vaping. The news reporter even asks, well, does it need to be banned? Oh, wait. Oh, wait, it's already illegal. It's already been banned. A pack of durries is hundreds of dollars. And these vapes are only a 20. So parents need to get mad because banning them just hasn't worked. Bloody fools make no sense to anyone who understands what's going on. Just like in Thailand. Thailand to apply tax to non-alcoholic beer. Not only is Thailand planning on increasing existing tax on all types of alcohol, but it also plans on applying alcohol tax to non-alcoholic beer, according to Director General of the Revenue Department. Eknicki said that the department will increase tax on all types of alcohol in the fiscal year 2023 to help combat alcoholism among Thailand's youth. More and more young Thais are drinking heavily, so the price hike aims to reduce alcohol consumption and improve the overall health of the public, he said. The sincerity of Nikki's concern for the public health is questionable at best, because he also said that the department will start taxing beer containing 0% alcohol. He said that the younger generation is showing more interest in non-alcoholic beer, so we should tax that. Surely the non-alcoholic beer should remain tax-free if the goal is to reduce alcohol consumption among young ties. Don't you think? Agnicki also said tax on electronic cigarettes would be increased. Seeing as how electronic cigarettes are illegal in Thailand, it is unclear how this tax will be applied or is already being applied to vapes. Unless Thailand is planning to legalize vaping anytime soon. Just last week, the government reconfirmed their firm stance on the electronic cigarette ban. Pro marijuana health minister Anutin Chervonikul said that vaping poses a major health risk especially to young people who count for more than half of all e-cigarette users. Talk about some fake news, people. More than half of all electronic cigarette users are young people. What is, what is their definition of young people? Do I qualify as a young person? Maybe I need to change my hat. There. Now, do I qualify as a young person? No. How about now? Do I qualify as a young person?
Is, is that where they're getting maybe half of the people? Anyway, we need to tax all illegal products because that makes any sense. If it's illegal, well, people are buying the illegal items from someone who I'm sure has no reason to document and pay tax on the illegal sale. Just like it makes no sense to tax non-alcoholic drinks to stop people from drinking alcohol. Maybe we need to increase the tax on all vehicles, you know, to stop drunk drivers from getting into crashes. And you better increase fuel taxes too. Well, you know, to prevent youth driving. 38,824 US lives were lost in traffic crashes nationwide. That number marks the highest number of fatalities since 2007. Oh man. We have a youth driving fatality crisis. This is an epidemic. We need to tax cars, tax fuel, and if that doesn't work, we need to ban all vehicles. Sounds pretty stupid, doesn't it? Moving on. Dairy owner calls for better security after stolen car ram raid in Christchurch. A Christchurch business owner whose dairy was ram-raided early on Sunday morning says bollards should be installed outside the stores to protect them. Maltworks convenience store on Port Hills Road in Healthcott Valley was ram-raided with a stolen car at about 1 a.m. on Sunday, police said. Shop owner Dhruv Kumar Rav had watched security camera footage of the incident and said three Ram Raiders appeared to be teenagers. They stole about $3,000 of vaping gear, chewing gum, drinks, and lollies. He said one of the three offenders drove a car into the front of his store, while the other two waited outside in another vehicle. The Ram Raid caused about $7,000 worth of damage, he said. Police said in a statement that they were investigating the Ram Raid, which was perpetrated with a stolen car. They called for any witnesses or anyone with information to contact police via the 105 phone service, referring the file number 220904 slash 6128. Information can also be provided anonymously via Crime Stoppers on 0800-555-111 or at www.crimestopper-nz.org. How's that tight regulation in New Zealand working out? Has it stopped these juvenile delinquents from ram raiding and other dairy selling vapes? Huh? Does it work? I'm telling you people, laws only keep the honest people honest. It does absolutely nothing for criminals who will do whatever they must to get whatever they want. Moving on. From Dubai, Gang steals e-cigarettes worth 80000 from unattended vehicle. A gang of five people stole 19 boxes of electronic cigarettes and 6,000 dirhams from a vehicle belonging to a trading company. According to a police officer, a team of criminal investigators was able to identify the suspects. They admitted, after the arrest, that the crime was planned by observing vehicles parked in international city and that they waited until late hours of the night to carry out the robbery. The Dubai Criminal Court sentenced four of the accused to three months imprisonment. The fifth member of the gang was given the same sentence, but in absentia. The court also ordered them to pay jointly a fine of 86000 and to be deported from the state after serving their sentences. All right, folks, one more story before we get to the vape expos. City of Dayton, Kentucky passes ban on smoking and vaping over some objection. Folks, we need to watch and review this report together. So, 
Dayton, Kentucky is the first Campbell County city to go smokeless. Good evening. I'm Trisha Mackey. And I'm Rob Williams, ending smoking and vaping in restaurants and all properties. Ken Baker is live where the meeting just ended. Ken? Yeah, Trisha Rob, of course, that move was a little controversial tonight. Vaping and smoking inside of businesses, parks, inside of any public property now banned. So that move happened in a two, three to two vote, I should say, by council members. It was a full house meeting as members of the community sounded off over a full smoking ban in Dayton, Kentucky. I'm here tonight to speak in favor of the smoke free ordinance that will appear tonight for a second reading. I, that's why I support this this ordinance for a smoke free environment, uh, specifically where I'm located. I'm right down the street from a school zone. Those in favor of banning smoking and vaping from businesses, properties and parks say it will attract more investment and foot traffic to the area while also helping people to lead healthy lives. But there are those who are upset that smoking will no longer be allowed inside of their businesses and favorite spots. That's smoking at the casinos. It's state of Kentucky, but you want to pick on a little bitty town that's got two bars. I said 45 people, probably 30 of them smoke. Patricia Flynn says her bar has allowed smoking for more than 80 years. She thinks the ban will force her customers to go other places, which she believes will drive her out of business. I think all we need to do is post a sign that says this is a smoking establishment. Leave it to the choice of the people. We asked the city administrator what happens to those businesses who don't follow the rules. It's, it's a $50 fine, but the, the, that can be progressively increased up to $250 if you blatantly continue to violate the ordinance. For individual offenders, it's a $50 fine each offense. So some folks have questions tonight, what happens next? Well, what we can tell you is this is gonna be policed by the health department and also city police here. So whichever agency responds to uh, whatever the matter is and issues that citation, that's who's gonna take in that revenue. Live tonight here in Dayton, Kentucky, I'm Ken Baker, Fox 19 Now. All right, so let's get this straight. Vaping and smoking is now banned in all restaurants, all publicly available properties, all businesses, all parks, and all public places. Dayton, Kentucky made it illegal to smoke or use the product to quit smoking anywhere in public. And they think a $50 fine that's incrementally increased up to $250 is going to stop businesses or people that choose not to comply with this ridiculous prohibition. I'm not even going to get into how illogical or how wrong this is. Moving on. Yes, folks, time for some vape expo announcements. Yeah, finally, this is awesome. Vupu will join in Intertabac 2022. See you in Dortmund, Germany. Oh man, I wish I could go to Dortmund, Germany for this Intertabac Expo. Anyway, Intertabac is the world's largest trade show for tobacco products and smoking accessories. From 15 to 17 September, the 42nd Dortmund International Tobacco Fair, also known as Intertabac, will be held in Dortmund, Germany. This year, a fully upgraded inner tobacco has expanded its coverage to electronic cigarettes, tobacco, and cigar. It will attract over 200 brands and more than 20,000 visitors to the site. Vupu, as a pioneering brand in e-cigarette industry, will take all category, hot selling, and newly launched products to the site and bring worldwide visitors enjoyable vaping experience. Link in the description below if you're interested. Vaping Expo, exhibitors from half the world arriving at the Padua Fair. Vaping Expo is already a success. When there are just under three months to the start of the two days in Veneto, in fact, there are already many prestigious adhesions received. Saturday, 26 and Sunday, 27 November, will be there for Vaping Expo. 
the first in Padua of the vaping fair. In the control room, the patron, Ronaldo Cavalletta, revealed how the Padua fair was born. From the desire to create a meeting point between operators in the sector and users to update the square on the main news. Also underlying how, meetings such as Vaping Expo give the opportunity to the various actors to be able to confront themselves also on the critical issues and problems that distinguish the particular historical moment. The heart of Veneto, therefore, location of initiative that is already almost sold out. Almost sold out? It's over two months away. And it's already almost sold out. So I guess we need to take a look at the upcoming Vape Expo in France. Vape Expo, opening of the ticket office for the October Vape Show. As every year, this is the event awaited by French-speaking and foreign vapers. The Vape Expo International Vape Show will take place at the Paris Event Center on October 22nd and 23rd. The ticket office is now open for the most impatient. We obviously advise you to take your tickets in advance. And if this is not possible, note that a ticket office will also be available on site by credit card and cash only. Admission is 10 euro for the general public and 20 or 30 euros for professionals, depending on the formula chosen. Website, if you guys are interested in checking it out, it's vapeexpo-france.com. Bonjour, mon ami. Do you think high close friends are going to get you far in France? Put on the remerde. Probably not. I guess I got to wait for, I don't know, maybe a closer vape expo. Maybe in an English speaking country. Anyway, well, that wraps up the Global 20 Vape Science Advocacy News for the week ending 9-9-2022. I've got a couple reviews that I need to finish up and wrap up this weekend. I'm especially looking forward. I think you guys should especially be looking forward to the Blotto Max video. Let me tell you, folks, I am not happy with Sam or Dovepo. In their release of the Blotto Max. On the other hand, the Dead Rabbit 3 and this Bellow Disposable have been fantastic so far. But those are all going to be for another day in another video. So my wish is always peace, love, and a hunky vape to end cigarette combustion. Have a great day. Yeah.